So nerve lesion in upper limb. Before going to the main sections, uh, some introductory review must be taken uh, that we all studied during our undergraduate level. So here is a picture that we are all familiar with because we have been learning this picture from our undergraduate level and sometimes it freaks me out. I think many of you have faced the same <laughs> issue. So uh, step by step, that be <laughs> better. So first thing uh, that can be learned from this picture from where the brachial plexus arises, I mean the spinal value. It's clearly seen that from cervical 5 to thoracic 1, so C5 to T1, first informations. And how many parts of brachial plexus, the, the roots, the trunk, the division, and the cord. Four nerve need to start it in details. That's muscle cutaneous, that's radial, but median nerve and ulnar nerve. And sometimes long thoracic nerve possesses uh, great importance. In some questionnaire, we will talk about it later. But for now, uh, if I, talk, if I uh, ask you the musculocutaneous nerve from, what is the root value? The musculocutaneous came from uh, C5, C6, and C7. The radial nerve, it came uh, posteriorly, so actually it uh, arises from the hall, from top to bottom, so C5 to T1. Oh, axillary nerve, we forget that one. That was also important. That uh, came, I th Cervical 5 and 6. Okay. And median nerve, uh, same like the radial nerve came from the C5 to T10 and the ulnar nerve that is C7 and T1 okay to visualize it more clearly I would like to show you another picture the root came from the anterior rami from the C5 to T1 that's we already know that one but from through which muscle it passes that's the question the muscle involved is scalene muscle between scalenius anterior and medias root passes what about the trunk is situated in the posterior triangle of the neck division lies behind the middle third of the clavicle and the cord it is, is related to axillary artery let me clear the confusions it seems brachial artery actually it's it's wrong <laughs> it's wrong uh, from where the axillary artery became the brachial artery the demarcation point is the lower border of teres major muscle and the, all the cord medial lateral and posterior are named after their positions with axillary artery let's talk about the lateral cord the lateral cord gives rise to two branch musculocutaneous and median nerve so musculocutaneous the name itself denotes its function muscle and skin cutaneous musculocutaneous supplies the anterior compartment of the arm here it is and in the arm anterior compartment three muscles coracobrachialis biceps and brachialis downwardly it supplies the skin of the forearm the lateral part so that is why it is called the lateral cutaneous nerve or forearm or simply here in a literature point of view lateral antebrachial cutaneous nerve whatever now move on to the median nerve 
in the anterior compartment of the arm it doesn't give any branch clearly seen here it keeps the branch on the forearm okay in the forearm is a common flexor origin medial epicondyle muscles of humerus so from here all the flexor muscle arises so it gives branches of the following like pronator teres flexo digitorum superficialis or fds palmaris longus flexor carpi radialis flexor carpi radialis this all the this fds these palmaris longus this uh, fcr they are the superficial muscle the deep muscle of the forearm are supplied by anterior interosseous nerve here it is it's just a branch of uh, medial median nerve and it supplies the deep part of the forearm muscle called the fdp flexo digitorum profundus flexor pollicis longus here it is that's the thumb muscle and pronator quadratus so as likely they are supposed to be a posterior interosseous nerve yes there is a posterior interosseous nerve which comes from the posterior cord we will talk about it later the median nerve enters the thumb by carpal tunnel here the carpal tunnel syndrome is an important topic i will try to discuss it in another video the thinner muscle are supplied by the median nerve the thinner muscles and the hypothenar muscle is here that is supplied by the ulnar nerve the thinner muscles are abductor pollicis brevis opponens pollicis and flexor pollicis brevis the superficial head the flexor pollicis brevis is supplied also by ulnar nerve the deep part so in common sense thinner muscles abductor pollicis brevis opponents policies and flexor policies brevis two lumbricals also in general sense there is a mnemonic to remember the muscle supplied by median nerve in hand in short is called loaf or loaf so l for lateral lumbricals o for opponents policies a for abductor policies brevis and f for flexor policies brevis these are the motor supply of the hand now what about the sensory supply lateral two-third of the palmar surface and the lateral three and half fingers are supplied by the median nerve so what about the nail bed i mean the dorsal surface of the distal phalanx that is supplied by the median nerve the lateral three and half finger nail bed is supplied by the median nerve as likely the medial one and half finger nail bed is supplied by the ulnar nerve don't pick radial nerve every time it says the dorsum surface of the hand so please check it out the question carefully patterns of damage of which of median nerve so it can be damaged at wrist it can be damaged at elbow okay okay let's make it uh, a clear idea so 
So if he's damaged here, all symptom like carpal tunnel syndrome, okay? Like ape hand deformity, is, uh, it, if, ape hand deformity. So what is the ape, ham, ape hand deformity? That is called paralysis and wasting of the thinner eminence. So thinner, uh, okay. Uh, thinner eminence lost carpal tunnel syndrome these two are the motor so and the sensory I told about the radial two and half fingers okay So if this nerve is damaged here at the elbow level, what will be happened? Same as damage at wrist plus all the flexor muscles, this all the, this muscle will be inactivated. So the flexion of the wrist will be compromised. Okay. And the deeper part the anterior interosseous supplies the pronator quadratus so patient will unable to pronate the hand okay so not hand actually forearm my mistake here is a point to remember there is another muscle called flexor carpi ulnaris we see there is a muscle flexor carpi radial so there is supposed to be a flexor carpi ulnaris that muscle is supplied by the ulnar not flexor carpi ulnaris supplied by ulnar nerve that muscle also flex the forearm so even after the damage of median nerve at the elbow joint there will be still a functioning part to flex the forearm that is by flexor carpi ulnaris okay so uh, my point is the flexion of the forearm will not be lost for a not not be lost completely okay let's try to understand the hand or wrist deviation it is responsible by two muscle flexor carpi radialis and flexor carpi ulnaris the flexor carpi radialis supplied by the median nerve deviates the hand to the radial or the lateral side on the other hand Flexor carpi ulnaris supplied by the ulnar nerve cause the hand to the ulnar side or medial side. If any of them lost its function, say example flexor carpi radialis has lost its function, so flexor carpi ulnaris deviates the hand to the ulnar side and vice versa to ulnar deviation too. So in summary, medial nerve damage at elbow level, pronation lost. wrist flexion completely no so will be weak wrist flexion and ulnar deviation of wrist a 43 years old man is a step outside a nightclub he suffers a transaction of his median nerve just as it leaves the brachial plexus. Which of the following is least likely to ensure? Okay. So, uh, I so let's summarize. The median nerve has been damaged from the very top, from here. Say, for example, okay, which one is least likely to be occur? ulnar deviation of the wrist it will happen because the unopposed functions of the radial deviation by the median nerve no yes ulnar deviation of the wrist will occur because ulnar nerve is intact so flexor carpi ulnaris is functioning 
it will deviate the wrist to the ulna side so that's that will that will occur so what's the p inability to oppose the thumb it is it is functioned by opponent's policies is opponent's policies is function functioning no it's not it will lost its function so okay that not the answer c loss of pronation yeah that's just true loss of pronation will occur because pronator quadratus is lost loss of flexion of the thumb joint okay that will also because the anterior interstitial nerve supplies flexor policies longus and median flexor policies brevis all lost complete loss of wrist joint ah that's it that's the tricky part complete loss no it will not complete loss still some function will be intact of wrist function by flexor carpi ulnaris so the answer is here the e there will be a weak loss of wrist flexion ah so there will be a weak wrist flexion okay second scenario a 25 years old man is a step in the upper arm the brachial artery is lacerated at the level of proximal humerus brachial artery proximal humerus okay and is being repaired a nerve lying immediately lateral to the brachial artery is also lacerated which of the following of the nerve is most likely to be occur what did I tell you on the above of the arm median nerve lies lateral to the brachial artery but in the cubital fossa it lies middle to it so the answer will be median nerve okay let's move on to our next nerve the ulnar nerve that's the end of the part one the rest of the nerve lesion in upper limb will be published on subsequent videos please subscribe and be tuned on for the coming videos thank you all for today hope you all like the video allah peace